Thanks, Action. Hello, everyone. Where did everybody go? Come back, code reviews are important. Okay, so we'll uh, talk about the code reviews and how Code Rabbit is using AI to transform them. About a uh, little bit about Code Rabbit journey, we launched uh, back in July 2023. For the first couple of months, we uh, were fortunate to have our uh, funnel of customers who helped us uh, uh, improve our product, refine it. And since then, we have been getting a pretty good adoption. Currently, CodeRabbit is in use at uh, uh, over 400 organizations. So uh, let's talk about the current code review process. Uh, in terms of automation, we have uh, uh, linters, uh, static code analyzers. Uh, these are good at uh, enforcing coding styles, finding syntax errors, uh, finding security vulnerabilities, looking for areas for performance optimizations. But what these really lack is a context where feedback based on the functionality, based on the intent of the code changes, based on the, uh, the design patterns that the organization follows. And for these reasons, code reviews have uh, largely been manual up until now. And if we look at the, uh, the pipeline uh, CI, CD, uh, except the code reviews, everything else is pretty much automated. And the manual code reviews have their own challenges. It's a slow process. Uh, GitLab recently published the data where um, it says that uh, a merge request on GitLab on average takes two to four days to be completed. And that slows down the developers, but along with that, it slows down the deliverables, it slows down any hot fixes that need to go out to production. There's a context switching that happens. A developer has created a pull request and they move on to the next task. Depending on when they get the review feedback from the peers, they have to switch back, get back into the code, and it takes time and mental energy, and it slows down their productivity. And then we have dysfunctional teams. Uh, in many places, I guess uh, we all being developers, we have seen that uh, code reviews become a mere rubber stamping. There are personality clashes within the teams where uh, the developers just cannot work well together. They get into nitpicking uh, smaller issues and that slows down the merge process even further. And uh, this being a manual process, it's prone to errors. So um, there was a, a study published by SmartBear, which shows that uh, uh, a human brain can process only about four to 500 lines of code in a single review session. So that means like there are, uh, there's a code which is getting shipped out to production, which is not effectively uh, reviewed. And when we find the bugs in production, uh, I guess we are all well aware how costly and how significantly complex they become. So what does CodeRabbit has to provide? It's an AI-powered code reviewer, which does a context uh, review feedback, uh, which gets uh, uh, smarter, better over time. And in terms of the USP, uh, it does, uh, uh, it accelerates the code reviews. It does a pretty comprehensive review within uh, uh, about like five to seven minutes, depending on the size of the pull request. And along with that, it finds the issues which are generally missed by, by the humans. So with the, with the unique AI insights that have people thinking on the way they, they have implemented the functionality and how it could be corrected. Uh, and this is the simplified version of how the reviewer works. Uh, we get the events from Git providers, GitHub, GitLab. 
whenever a pull request is created, there's some pre-processing that happens. Part of the pre-processing, we gather additional context that's needed to do the reviews. It comes from the code repositories. It comes from the workflow systems. Uh, the teams might be using like Jira, Linear. Uh, we get additional context from the prior reviews that might have happened on those repositories. Uh, we use the, the prompt customization uh, that has been done for those repositories using all that. We build the review request that's sent to large language models. We get a response back, uh, suppress the noise that needs to be suppressed, and then it goes through a, a series of verification steps. And uh, the reviewer autonomously decides if further review is needed. And this happens for each and every diff that's part of the, the pull request. So once um, this is completed, all said and done, the review is posted within GitHub. And there's a review state which is maintained uh, on, on GitHub. Uh, the core features of the product, it does uh, continuous reviews when a pull request is uh, created, it kicks, uh, the reviewer kicks in. It completes a review in about five minutes. And if there are additional commits which are made on the pull request, it does an incremental review of only those new commits. It does a, a pretty good first level validation against the linked issues. So generally, whenever a pull request is created, it's, it's linked with some ticketing system, whether it's GitHub issues or, or Linear or Jira. So it goes in, it, it does that validation whether uh, the PR, whether pull request meets the intended need or not. It also identifies any uh, related issues. And this is helpful in case if a developer forgets uh, linking the issue with the PR, if there are duplicate issues within the repository, if it's like buggy, brittle code which is broken often, it would list out all the uh, issues which were fixed around that piece of code in, let's say, like last one month. It does a line-by-line -line review of each and every diff uh, within the PR. And if there are any actionable suggestions, those are posted as, uh, uh, as, as review comments. If there is a code change suggestion, uh, that can be committed uh, within the pull request uh, with a single click. Uh, and then it does a, a, a verification of, across the entire code base for the changes in the PR. So let's say if uh, within the pull request you have changed the code which is uh, referenced anywhere else in the repository, if there's a function signature that is being changed. So it goes in and validates whether outside of that PR it has been updated or not. And if it's not, it flags that. And then you can have... Uh, um, you can chat with the bot, you can ask it questions, you can provide it more context. Uh, you can have it write the code, you can have it write the unit text, etc. And as you, as you have these conversations with the bot, uh, we pass those conversations and we generate the learnings out of those which are used for the future reviews. And over a period of time, this builds a team knowledge base across your code repositories, the, uh, the way you style the code, like design patterns, standards that you use. Yeah, and um, another interesting feature with this, so uh, we, with this we are having AI generate the shell scripts. So with that, uh, in, in your natural language, you can essentially ask any questions about your code repositories. You can ask like who were the top contributors on this repo in, let's say, last one month? What are the issues which were closed in, in last one week? Which are the most frequently changed files? What are the, line of, the number of lines of code that was changed? So uh, next I wanted to touch on the, um, the AI stack for developers and how we uh, envision it. So uh, as the developers start using AI like as, as a general knowledge base, like as the developers are in the design phase, they have more broader questions. Uh, they use AI chatbots like uh, chat GPT, perplexity, etc. And then as the developers start writing the code, 
uh, we have uh, a GitHub Copilot, we have Cursor, we have uh, uh, a few more code generation tools. But all the code that is getting written that uh, needs to be reviewed as well. And irrespective of whether the code is being written by a human or by a bot, it still needs to be reviewed. And that's why uh, we need a, a AI a tool like a Code Rabbit to review the code. So now we'll, um, I guess, jump into some of the review examples. Uh, the review takes about five minutes, so I'm not going to do a live demo, but I'll, I'll go over some of the existing reviews from uh, from open source. When Code Rabbit reviews the pull request, it, uh, at a high level, it generates the summary. There are uh, like two levels of summary. One is uh, like kind of release notes, non-technical, and then there is a technical walkthrough where it shows like which files were changed and what were the changes in these files. And if uh, we look at this specific pull request, it identified that there was this uh, issue which it believes that got addressed with this PR. So most likely in this case, uh, the developer forgot to link the PR. And if we look at the, the pull request again, after the review was done, uh, the developer updated and added this comment that it fixes uh, this issue. And then for the issues which are linked with the PR, it does this uh, first level of validation for the objectives uh, within the issue, whether those were addressed or not, with the confidence level, if it's not sure. And uh, in this example, if we see there, uh, the issue had objective that the documentation and the, the user guide needs to be updated. So most likely maybe it's uh, out of the scope of this pull request, but it was able to identify that uh, these changes are not part of this PR. So this uh, is example of how the, the review uh, comments are posted and how the conversations work. Uh, in this example, uh, the bot commented that when uh, this code is reading from the cache, it's, it's not checking for the undefined for, uh, for, for, for null exception. And the user responded back that uh, this object would always be cached, it can never be null. And after that, the bot went and it checked wherever that cache is being set, whether over there it's handled or not. And it prompted the user that if that's the case, then you should probably fix when, you, when you're setting up the cache, uh, which uh, sure enough, the user agreed and they, they made the fix in this, in, in this commit. And then the, the bot responded that, uh, yeah, great to hear the issue has been resolved. And in this case, it's not the AI just being nice, it actually goes in and it validates whether within that commit that issue has been addressed or not. Uh, this is the example for how uh, it generates the learnings. So uh, the bot left a comment that uh, this a new parameter is a missing a validation. The user responded that the validation is uh, handled in this simulation file. And after that, it goes in and it checks whether it really is being handled in the simulation file or not. And for that, it uses the shell scripts. And once it has determined that it is handled in that file, it generates a learning out of that. So it says the user has clarified that the validation uh, is handled in this file. So after this, in future, uh, whenever uh, the review happens, it has this additional context that where the validation is being handled. Uh, 
uh, this is another example. The user changed the name of the function. And part of the review, it was able to go in and identify that uh, this function, the older uh, function is still being used in one of the files and it needs to be updated. Uh, this is a similar example. I think we can skip it. Yeah, this is interesting. So uh, the bot left a comment based on uh, this, this to-do comment within the code. And it said that, like, do you want me to create a issue for it to be handled in future? And the user uh, responded that, sure. And then after that, bot created an issue within, within the GitHub repository. I guess the user was just trying to test whether it appended this, uh, this text, which, uh, which it did if we look at the issue. Yeah, this, is a, this is another interesting example. So uh, in this case, the user asked CodeRabbit to create a class diagram using a mermaid's uh, syntax within the pull request. And uh, which sure it did. And this, these kind of insights are exceptionally useful when, as a peer reviewer, you're looking at the code and you're not sure where exactly it's being referenced. So you can ask the board any kind of questions around your code base. And uh, I guess, yeah, I can keep going on, but like what uh, all these are uh, on, on the public repository. So if you go to GitHub, you search for Code Rabbit, and it would show all the pull requests that have been reviewed by Code Rabbit. It's about like things sixty to seventy thousand. So uh, the sign up uh, is is pretty simple with a GitHub or GitLab account. Uh, within a few minutes, you have the app installed on the repository and it's up and running and it starts reviewing the new uh, pull requests. You get a free trial for the entire organization for one week. And if uh, it's open source project, then it remains free forever. That's all I have. Thanks, everyone.